all of my sons are wonderful fishermen. Dave just, he's got a disease. You understand? Oh, I got something good to say about Dave. When you meet him, he's not gonna say everything about fishing. Three to four rod troll live bait. Current ribs, almost like an oil slick. North to south, sailfish, kings, 120 feet, shallow water. I'm gonna stop and work it. Temperature change, a bait fish in there, 95% of the time feed in and out of them. That is the fish highway, don't leave it. David Gauzins is an animated South Florida outdoorsman. Many, many times I've been up and I'm out there early driving down Ocean Drive at five in the morning and all you see is Ferraris and Maseratis and people leaving the clubs walking with stilettos in their hands and I'm here driving my beat up truck. You see his white truck and there's a bunch of kayaks sticking out with flags hanging off them. That's how you spot David in Miami. I'm getting more looks in that truck than anyone in these nice ass cars, I'll tell you that. <laughs> little five mile an hour wind. I got my bait and I am paddling into the sunrise. If those are my conditions for the day, I am stoked. When you think of Miami, you don't think of the outdoors. You think of the city, the people, the nightlife. But the second you get away from downtown, it is a different world. Suddenly there's seagrass all over. The sounds are melting away, especially if you're on a kayak or paddling. When I was a kid, we'd walk around to the lakes and the canals down here in South Florida and we'd fish for bass, peacocks, tilapias, anything we could catch. I wanted a way to get out on the water. And me and my brothers saved up some money. We used to sell mangoes and we were at a garage sale and saw a kayak for like 60 bucks and we bought it. And man, it was like instant. I had access to the entire waterway. We'd be fighting over who got to use it. That's where it all started. Offshore, there was really no one doing it until I started hearing about those extreme kayak fishing tournaments. Joe used to do these meetups. Extreme kayak fishing was essentially born in the recession because of what happened. The mindset of people, I gotta stop using engines, I can't afford motors, I can't afford gas, I can't afford a boat. We're gonna get everybody else and give them the opportunity to catch the same type of fish all on your own, it's all on you in a little piece of plastic. Kayaks are simple and they're economical. There's a thing in Miami with the fishermen here that they're kind of macho, but David is not that way. If you miss a fish, he's not mad at you, he's mad with you. Man, I do it because it's like an addiction a little bit, you know. If I haven't gone in a while, I really start feeling that itch, and I, and I do mean kayak fishing, because I might be going and fishing off boats and stuff, but it is not the same rush that I get. I love the connection to the water, I feel. A lot of boaters who don't have any interest in fishing, it is all about how big your boat is, how beautiful it looks, and it ain't really like that in the kayaking community. That is a tool. When you're burning fuel, which is nothing against it, but it's a little bit of a disconnect there. You know, you're pushing a button, you're hitting a throttle, and you're going. When I'm kayak fishing, for example, I am gonna explore whatever area I'm in. I have no choice. It makes you a better fisherman, and that's part of the reason I really kind of love it. That's what does it. You gotta love what you're doing, and he, he clearly does. To paddle that kayak offshore, I couldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. It used to be like, if you're trying to go offshore, you were a nut. That's how some of us old boat guys, if you could own a motor, why would you pedal? God bless him for inventing the foot pedals. Now you can wear yourself out twice as fast. I've seen him get out of that kayak on the beach and not be able to take a step. There's a lot of things that can happen, that have happened, that I hope never happen. Well, he's six, seven miles offshore. 
storms in the summer. They move super fast and suddenly it goes from a calm, beautiful day to blowing 25 knots, lightning and rain side. Any little movement you do, the thing wants to flip over. So everything's behind me for the most part. If you can't reach something out there, it's useless to you. I was out there pretty much twice a week all the time growing up and all my life with a boat. And if I'd seen a kayak out there, I'd throw them a life ring and try to save them. You know, I mean, come on, I'd have thought there's a problem here. You're just a piece of flotsam. You're on a little piece of plastic and you're hunting for beasts, you know, that are the size of you. That's what made it great for me, personally, was, was that caveman, old school type approach. And you're in this little floating piece of plastic between you and this prehistoric monster, a fish that most people, you know, can only dream of catching in a boat, let alone in a kayak. Out in the ocean where you're dropping a bally who are dropping a live bait, pretty much anything can happen. You're gonna literally feel the kayak kind of just like a shift. You get that buck fever, that line just screaming. Your heart's racing, you pick up that rod. You're trying to up and down, up and down. It is a tug of war. And you go on a sleigh ride. This isn't a boat. It's not that heavy. It pulls you behind. And you better get your game face on, man. Finally getting them close. And then you're like looking over the gunnel. You know, it's a present and you don't know what it is. It's, it's like Christmas morning. And then you see it. When they finally rise to the surface, and then you see those chompers, and you see the eye look at you, and you see the head, and, and just the, the beauty of this beast. There's no other feeling in the world like it. Sailfish are notoriously hard fighting fish. It's the fastest fish in the ocean, and it's showing you right off the bat. Come up and attack baits, whack at it, whack at it. A lot of fish jump, but not a lot of fish jump like a sailfish, where they'll do 20 jumps in a row, peeling line the whole time. And when you get one that's as big as you are, up close and personal, they are feisty. I've had sails that, that's a two hour fight almost, and they really wear themselves out. And when you get them in, you handle them by trying to keep them in the water as much as possible. And one of the beautiful things about these pedal drive kayaks is it allows you to revive them properly. So you'll hold the sailfish in the water, pedal with your feet and get that water moving through their gills and you let them go and you see them swim away. It is a really good feeling. No matter what, you try to get away from it, but part of a special fish to me is edible. <laughs> That's how I was raised catching fish and eating them and man mahi have it all you can eat them first of all they are beautiful they change colors in the water they fight hard really there's not another fish i can think of that offers the variety that a mahi offers they're under a weed line they'll have bars on them totally camouflaged like a chameleon the second you hook them they start changing colors immediately a lot of times especially towards the end of the fight they'll start going to a green with a yellow belly when you're offshore kayak fishing, you're not in a boat killing 15 to 20 fish. We're doing it for the hunt. If we can bring home one fish, it's worth it in my book. That's what it's about. If I would go out there and catch one fish the whole day, that's fine. And you earned it. I mean, coming back in, you feel so good. There is nothing quite like harvesting your own fish, going grocery shopping in the ocean, and to share with family. I mean, it's a special feeling, you know? It's all about the bare necessities, and at the end of the day, that makes it a more successful and fun time for me. And that goes for life. All this extra fluff is for the birds, man. You have to do it to really feel it. It's hard for me to explain it, but the best thing I could say is that at that moment, nothing in the whole entire world matters except you and that fish. We don't need that much to enjoy ourselves. And this has proven it to me.
Yeah. On this path of life, the task simply is don't let the trash tip me strictly. Keep it classic and you'll surpass quickly. How was that be? We'll keep a second guessing and asking the question. Is the glass half full or half empty? Some stars burn out from fast entry while others last a century. It's the blind state of this entire country. They want us to embrace the superficial. Make the masses feel special while this empire, they run it corruptly. Some do it for the income.